My name is Tokra Debayo, the president of Teenage Affairs Ministries. I am live on Divine TV. Over the course of the years, I've seen something going wrong with the existence and manifestations of men. And that can be traceable to how they are being trained. Uh, there was a case of an, a, a, a teenager that came to us and told us that she needed 200 naira to sleep with men. Wow, you will say, wow. But it is not the cause of the teenager because the child we raise will determine the adult we praise tomorrow. A lot of parents are not parents, they are serpents. A lot of parents don't understand what it means to be parents. So they sit in the conclave of the type to call parents and they begin to live a life that is antenatal to the lives of the child they ought to raise. The Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go. And now that brings me to a very, very vital question. How are you training up your child? Now, a lot of times I've seen concepts of parenting gone so. I've seen concepts of parenting gone bad. I've seen concepts of parenting go a wire because most parents don't understand the ministry and the effectiveness of parenting. What is, who is a parent? We have to go back to, the, uh, to Genesis 1 model of uh, when God came in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and said, let us make man in our own image. He said, let us make man in our own image. That image of God that you were created is the what defines you as a parent. Now, when God gives you a child, he's not giving you as an owner. He's giving it to you as a steward. You are a steward. You are not the production factory of the child. You are a management company of that child, right? So when a child comes into you, you have to come to a certain understanding that you are a manager. You are managing the destiny of the child. Okay, so train up a child in the way it should go. Now, the point is now, the scripture, that scripture is very, very effective. So I'm going to break it down. It says train up. Now, so that means that there are some training that are trained down. So if uh, your training is not just training, maybe I'm training, I'm training my child, and I ask the question, is it an upward training or a downward training? You can't train a child when you yourself are not trained. Okay, just like the way somebody will come and uh, we, are, we are boarding, a, we are, we are on, a, on top of a flight, and somebody comes and says, okay, I am uh, born again, I can speak in tongues, and uh, I have everything, but this is my first time of flying a plane, and I believe that because I am born again, you will trust me to fly this plane. Even if you are a spirit filled person, won't you jump down of that plane? That's how many parents are. You don't understand the training method of a child. So you raise up a child to a, a, in a damaged mindset to become a damaged person. Now, they train up a child. It means that that training must be upward. That training must be towards a direction. That training must be towards uh, the motive and the mission why everyone gave you that child. Train up a child. You never say train up an adult. Many people are training up an adult. What you should have trained up uh, the child when he was a he or she was a child, you left that, you left that, and you uh, begin to see when they grow up. You now begin to complain. No, don't accept, don't complain what you accepted in a child when he becomes an adult. Don't complain about it. So a lot of people come and uh, they give us model of um, parenting that is wrong. Is they train up a child. So your number one, your training should be upward. Okay, number two, you don't train an adult, you train a child. Okay, so number three, in the way, so there's a way. That is the process. Jesus, the Bible says that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. But the way is the process. The truth is the uh, principle, while the life is the product. Now, a lot of parents don't understand these three cardinal points in raising up a child. Uh, they bring up a child and they think that they can just do anything to... Um, navigate that child to become whatever. Mm, you don't. A child is created for a purpose. Okay? A child is created for a purpose. I ask myself a question. Imagine Messi is a medical doctor. It will be any money, but that global phenomenon that he is today, he will not have achieved it. So a lot of times, parents want or they want a child to go in the way they ought to. They, 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 they believed is, uh, is good for that child. Uh, and that is one of the major problems we have in this generation. Uh, I did this research and I, I, I discovered that education is taken from the Greek word, which means educo. Educo means training the knowledge that is within. You cannot train a dog how to fly, no matter how effective you are. You cannot, because inside a dog, the dog does not have the DNA, it's not wired to fly. You cannot train a, do a fish how to run. A fish is not wired how to run. Okay, so I believe personally that 
parenting has been a major surge in uh, the lifestyle of children that we see in, uh, in the society today. Let me quickly tell you some uh, various type of parenting. Number one, we have the A-like kind of parents. The A-like kind of parents are parents that they know God. They know God, but they allow their children to do whatever thing they want. The Bible makes us understand that Eli was a man, was a prophet. He was, he was that, he was this, he was that. But at a certain time, when his eyes grew dim, he couldn't interpret the destinies of his children in his lifestyle. His children became wayward and they began to do anything. He missed his glory because of his children. Eli was a good man, but he missed his life, he missed his call, he missed his purpose because of his children. Okay? Now we have this the number two kind of payment we have is the somewhere kind of payment. Now, the summer kind of payment are payment that God want about the for, uh, former parenting style. God want them and told them, look, this is the reason why I'm going to condemn this race called a lie. This is the reason. This is what they are doing. But someone does not have any other, any other model of parenting that he could adopt except from the one he was, he was accustomed to. He was accustomed to the Eli kind of parenting. So he grew up and he was always, he was always, he was always seeing the models and the practicality of what uh, Eli was doing. He, he also missed it. He also raised uh, children that lacked the moral compass, that lacked the value and intrinsic value to become change agents in their generation. Now we could see that was why it was because of the children of uh, Samuel that uh, um, the children of Israel asked for a king because they saw patterns. They could not withstand it again. They could not, um, they could not uh, bear the burden of uh, what some children were doing. Then the number three kind of parent that we have is the Abrahamic um, parenting. The Bible says, I know Abraham, he will teach my children, he will teach his children. I know Abraham, that was a testament from God, uh, that I know Abraham, that he will teach his children uh, how to serve me, how to obey me, how to value what I value, how to do whatever thing I do. Okay, so we have three kind of parents that is existing now. Some parents, they just think their children to be reward. Some parents just, they knew what, they knew that the model of parenting is wrong, but they don't have the strength uh, to make it happen. Then the last one is parents that work uh, side by side as managers with God to raise children. Now, what we are seeing in the society today is not a society problem. It's not a society problem. When I mean it's not a society problem, is because society is not society in itself. It's a function and a blend of many families coming together. If the family is old, the society will be old. So if the society is not old, go and check the family system. Now, uh, uh, in one of our gatherings, a teenager came and told me that uh, my father sleeps with me. And I said, wow. He said, yes, my father. I said, what about your mom? He said, my mom left uh, my father when I was two, two years old or so, thereabout. And uh, uh, since then, my father has been doing this, doing this, doing this. I, won, won, I had a call when I wrote my Facebook. Somebody called me and told me that I, I, sir, I feel like killing my parents, my father. Exactly. He said, I, I feel like killing my father. So I had to travel down to a popular camp to meet the father. When I got into the uh, building, in fact, I told the father, the way the man has, uh, accosted me, I said, sir, you are, in fact, ready, you ought to have killed you since. Because the way the man was behaving, he was so rude, he was so this. And I said, this is not how to raise a child. You know, he was a fa pastor. He was one of the high-ranking pastors, but he was not a parent. It was not a parent. Now, you, we should understand that parenting is more than just giving birth. Mm. Parenting is more, uh, more than giving birth. Parenting is a management system that cushions, that trains, that tames and trains the child to become what God has destined the child to be. Okay? Yeah, there are things, cushions, tames and trains. Tames, cushions, trains and tame a child to become what they ought to be. Now you ask me a question, what can be done? If I'm a bad parent, what can be done? If I've been, I've been a wrong, wrong parent? Now the truth is, the only person that cannot be corrected and cannot abide with correction is a dead person. If you know you are alive and you want to make amends with the child, you must go out of the way to know, understand what parenting is. So what is parenting? What does parenting about? Parenting is a management school. Parenting is a management school. You have to learn how to manage the talent uh, of your child. You have to learn how to manage the temperament of your child. You have to manage the, the, the weeks and the, uh, the desires of your child. You must learn it. You know, when we grew up, uh, most of our parents does not understand parenting because they grew up with abalist of grandfathers. Abalist does not smile. You know, so they grew up with that mindset and they come into a concept with us that you don't, they don't smile. So they, be, they, they believe that once they smile with your child, it's a sign of weakling. My, uh, I know many parents, I did a survey in one of our teenage conference and I asked them that 
How many of you have your father told you that I love you? They were looking at me blank. We had a we have a relationship we had a relationship um, program this month, and I was asking um, the youth and singles, and I asked them that how many of you here have your mother and father told uh, you that um, I love you? I think two hands out of about hundred or about raised up their hands. That's how that it's bad, you know. And one of the things is if you don't tell your child that I love you, somebody outside will tell your child I love you, and once they tell them, it might be on the bed that they will tell your child I love you, and you know the consequence of that. You know, so I, I, I believe uh, that you must understand the management ethics of being a parent. Enjoy inspirational, informative, and soul-lifting Christian programs, such as Christian Parenting and Homefront, Light After Darkness, Fulfilling the Mandate, Kids and Bible, Movies Review, Shepherd's Spouse, Kingdom Stars, Things Perspectives, My Next Gospel Event, and lots more on Divine Television. Download the Vine TV mobile app on Google Play Store or watch on our YouTube channel. You can also visit www.tvdivine.net. Divine TV and reaching souls through the gospel of Christ. Number two, you must uh, understand the place of God. The place of God. Now, you're about to say that uh, our parents are our first God. I agree with that, but not totally. You know, there are some things that we must question truth. When I was growing up, my father, I remember one day, my father told me that in my book, what I wish my parents told me, I wrote that story there. Uh, my, parent, my father told me that um, when you're eating, don't talk. Okay, so I wanted to tell him something. He said, well, I told you when you're eating, don't talk. I know our father then, they are, they are um, um, what's the right word to use? They are, they are like killer squad. When they give you an instruction and you go against it, you are dead. So, so he told me not to talk. So I kept quiet. After eating, I asked me, what I said, sir, when you were eating, I saw cockroach in your rice. He was like, ah, you should have told me. And I said, I wanted to talk. He said, I should not talk. You know, that's how bad our parents are. You know, they don't understand that we have a place of God. And the place of God is this. The Bible says, God told us that, come, let us reason together. How many of us? I remember when I wanted to write my jam. My father just bought the jam from top of, you are going to this school, you are right, you are going to become a medical doctor, you are going to be this, you are going to be that, you are going to be this. Going to be this. No, none of my opinion was mattered. But the truth is, if I become a medical doctor, I will have killed many people because I'm not the kind of person that is patient. If I give injection, I might forget the injection of bum bum and go and play. You know, I was a restless person. So, but my father wanted me to become the first doctor, right, in his lineage. Now, I'm not a medical doctor, but I'm still a doctor. I'm helping people navigate through life. I'm helping people get clarity through life. So we must come to a place that will reason with our child. You know, uh, we, we will reason with our child. It's a God factor. God said, let us. It's not let me. He said, let us. So there's a place of the us factor in making decision for our life. The educational system in Nigeria is bad. So our parenting system is bad. The political sphere is bad. Now, we are waiting for parents to take over the uh the correction principle that is happening i i believe one to one thing that we have to question truth we have to qu question truth now one of the truths we have to question is the parenting style concerning finances we have to question truth concerning the parenting style concerning talents we have to question truth concerning parenting system style about what i want to be you know a lot of times parents say no you cannot be a footballer you know i remember when uh, we were young and my younger uh, my elder brother immediately with that brother was very very good they used to come out to our house to come and push him to go and keep for them as a goalkeeper in football matches and um, um my father i okay let me first tell my story there was a day i was playing for a, a competition i wanted to score they sent me to go and grind pepper so i took the paper i used that uh, to go and play a football competition as i wanted to score i just saw my father i was face to face with the uh, goalkeeper i just saw my father was just laughing and you know that kind of life is we are dead I lied, left the football pitch, ran away. I was the, at that time they called me Ortega, very very skillful in playing football. But my father, to the glory of God, killed my football talent. You know, because I must become a medical doctor. You know, uh, my other brother was very very good with goal, goalkeeping. Uh, to the glory of God, my father killed the. Uh, he was not saying I talk about more. more. My dad could football in English. It means if I had known, I would have I would have let you guys focus on football and academics. At that time, we were good. But now, can I play football again? I can play, but not at that uh, skillful stage. Uh, so what am I saying? You must understand that parenting is more than just giving others. 
Parenting is more, uh, is more than just giving, uh, I give back to you. If you suck my breast, you know, our parents have used that to cajole us, even though you blah, 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 blah. So they say a lot of things, and they put us in trap. They put us in cages. They put their children in things they should not do. One of the... One of my teenage girl told me back then, she said she has committed seven abortions and she was 16 years old. She has committed seven abortions. You know, it was the father. I went to meet the stepfather and the stepfather was telling me where I was. They have told them, they are Calabar people, and they said, I've told them that she should go and bring the husband home. And I said, at what age? 16, 17. To go and bring husband. What husband would marry this one? Then in our tribe, in our tribe, you know. So they break that tribal thing into the destiny of children. You know, so what, what am I trying to say is that parenting is more than just going to church. Preventing is more than just going to church. People ask us a question, what can the church do? The question is that most pastors, are they good parents? That's the question. You know, you can't give what you don't have. Most pastors, are they good parents? Most people, yes, you, are, you can be very, very good in uh, dishing out the word of God, but you, the, the correction, the, the connection between you and your children, is it that good? A bishop, I was with a bishop some years back, and the bishop was telling me that, you know, my, my, me and my son, we have not seen to talk for the past one year. They stay in the same house. But the son never, we never listen to the father. When I asked the son, they said, my father killed my dream. You know, how many parents have killed their dream? So let's go back to the scriptures to see how God navigated and brought back a model of restoration to the world. Now, in Genesis chapter 2, uh, we saw how the devil played pranks and broke uh, a very, very cordial relationship between God and man. You know, he broke it and uh, there was crisis. There was crisis in uh, the Chinese uh, world. Uh, for crisis is taken from two root word. It means trouble and also means opportunity. The devil thought he created trouble between um, God and man, but God already saw it as an opportunity for his divine purpose to be enacted. He brought about, uh, the Bible says that the lamp of God that was slain before the foundation of the world. Huh? So God already knew that something might go wrong. So he has, he has, he has programmed a, a model of restoration. To this. So many parents don't have that model of restoration. When they push their children out, they do a lot of things. I was, I was talking with some one million boys and I discovered that most of them, to my chagrin, were people that had good homes. They came from good homes, but because the parent could not understand the kind of child they raised. Listen, if you have a goat as a child, you don't train that goat like a chicken. There are some children that are goats. You have to be, you have to have that goat mentality of training to train them. Yes, God gave it to them, but some children are stubborn. So you don't say because they are stubborn. I mean, me and me, I'll just send them. No, no, no. You are sending them to the hands of the devil. The day I saw these scriptures, I was shaking. Daniel chapter one verse four. The Bible says that the king said, "Bring men, bring young men that are they, they have leadership abilities, that they are they are good prospects for leadership. That's message for them, so that we can contaminate them." So that we can contaminate them. The, 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 the king uh, never went, king of Babylon never went for people that don't have good uh, source. He never went for people that are uh, children, youths that don't have good uh, destinies. He went for the best. And he said the aim of this thing is to, so that we can indoctrinate them in our language. We can indoctrinate them. So when you understand that the essence of the devil pursuing your children is to indoctrinate them into patterns and models and systems of destruction you will not sit down and fold your hands and say if god mm, god has given you you cannot have a company and the ceo travels and say okay manage this company and we are going and say eh, i know god my ceo because he has given me this company it's god god will come and train your i was talking to one parent and he says it's god that um, teaches us that god should help us train our child and i said that is very very wrong it's very, he said no me i don't understand i said look it's one of the lies from the pit of hell. God will not come and train your child. God has many things to do than train your child. He has given you that responsibility. So you must come to train your child. So as I was talking, now there was a model that God did. He called, I, I used to call it game. That's God and man enterprise. God already knew that there's going to be all. Oh, there's going to be a division. But God has already placed a hand between God and man. So no matter what happens, there's the restoration model. There's the restoration plan. There's a restoration system. So when Jesus came, Jesus said, I've not come. Okay, the Jesus became a reconciliator. I used to call Jesus the best woman manager. How did God, how did Jesus reconcile God and man together back? You know, it was a reconciliatory link. It was a link that brought about change. It was a link that brought about system correction. It was a link that brought about color correction into how men sees God and how God sees men. You know, it tore the veil. There was a covering. There was a there was a division. There was a there was a blackout. Jesus can't turn it. You know, many parents. The, 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 their child or their children don't have a 
don't have any experience with them. They always come and they are shocking. They are always afraid to talk with their parents. It is not good. It's not good. Yes, I understand. We must not come to the era whereby we begin to see civilization as the tool. I, I, I agree totally. Civilization has brought a lot of errors into the culture of our nation, into the culture of our land. But beyond that, we have a kingdom culture. We have a kingdom culture. God came. God, God, God in the God in Genesis chapter two, the Bible says that God will come in. Uh, the Lord God will come in the cool of the day to come and do kununia, to come and have fellowship, to come and have partnership. Fellowship means communion, means partnership, means distribution, means a know, a know, a knowing, a knowing process. You know how many parents know their child? Uh, uh, one, uh, a, a young dude was talking to me. Said, "I'm a, I'm a court, I'm a court guy. I, I've been in court for over ten years now." And he's like 19 years. So I said, you joined? He said, yes, I joined court. I was, I was introduced to courtism when I was in GS1. And over 10 years, he was a court. And he stays in the same house. He had tattoo. The mother does not know he has tattoo. And he's in that same house. You know, no payment, no correction, no, no fellowship, no, um, no colonial. Okay? So uh, I think the correction process is for parents to understand that colonial fellowship is more than just waking up. Like when I was growing up, it was hell for me. They would just ring the bell like 5 a.m. to come and pray. And, you know, I was not seeing, it was not an encounter process. It became a routine. You know, it became a routine that we should just pray. In fact, all the songs I know it, we start, Abraham, blessings are mine. We go to in the morning, today is the day. We already know the song. So as my mommy is singing it, we know if she will sing this one three times, she will sing this one two times, she will sing this one three times, then we'll do, you know. So it became a routine. So we're just doing it as a routine. If you wake me up, I can sing those songs. I can, it was not an encounter process, right? So I think parents should come to a place that they understand that they are pipelines for God distribution blessings to their children. They are pipelines. They must come to a place that they understand as God understands. I used to ask a question. How many parents went to God and asked God, why did you give me this child? How many? How many parents went to God and said, God, I know that this child is going to become a medical doctor, but how do you do this? Uh, in the essence of what I'm saying, please, parenting is more than just giving birth. Parenting is a management factory that God has given to you. You are the management partnership. You are in a management partnership with God to make sure that that seed he has given to you grows, blossoms, and becomes what God has destined you to be. You cannot be an effective parent without having a good and effective partnership with God. Mm. You know, it's not done. You must be able to ask God per time what God is saying concerning your child. You must be able at every time to be able to know the time frame of God. The Bible says that the sons of Issachar were men that, that understand time, uh, times and seasons and knew what Israel, they understood times and seasons and knew what Israel should do per time. So please, parents should understand times and seasons. The time and season your child is operating matters. And if you are not in vogue with the time and season, you will understand that there is a mishap, right? There is a mishap. Parents should not, parents should not become uh, an, a custodian of how the things should, things should go. You must go to the source code. You must go to the source code. In HTML, we, we understand something called source code. Once the code is corrupted, your result cannot be. It cannot be. So we must always... Uh, have the partnership with God, then we must also have a partnership with our people. Joel Luke chapter 2, verse 52 says, And the boy Jesus grew in wisdom and stature, and he had favor with God and with men. Jesus did not just go in stature, he did not just go in wisdom and stature, he had favor with God. He did not stop there. He had also favor with men. So you cannot say, I am listening to God, and the relationship with your children are bad. No, you must come to a place that the relationship with your children is apt. Is excellent. You must come. You are you are you you are a download center from the of the mysteries of God to your child. You are a download center. You are you are an epigma of revelation. Your child must come to you and must be able to pick codes, must be able to pick mysteries, must look at you and be able to, to use your staircase to climb to the next level. Okay, that's why you must train up. You must train up. You, you must not bring down the morale of your children. Many children are damaged. Many children are confused. Many children are disturbed because the home they come from or the home they are existing, they are, they are getting their source from is confused. You know, you cannot be a lion and have the DNA of a lizard. It's not possible. You are a lion that has the DNA of a lion. But most uh, that a, a lizard is also has four legs like a crocodile. does not mean it has the DNA of a crocodile. So you must imbibe the structure and the confidence of uh, 
uh, of a giant in your tide. You must see, you must be able to uh, uh, install confidence in your tide. David, David wa was a perfect example. David was in the wilderness. Imagine somebody killed the lion, killed the bear. Yes, the father still sent him back to the wilderness. You know, people say it does not matter. Okay, I said, okay, it does not matter. A big prophet of their time came, Eli, and, and after anointing seven, they did not remember David. David was not remembered. Look at that parenting style. That was why you see, if not for God, David, David lived the damaged life. Okay? David, David lived the damaged life. It was God that came into the scene and we, we corrected the life of David. Okay? So you see, David, David in his lifetime was misbehaving on the, until he met Bathsheba. You know, that's another story for another day. He met Bathsheba. So parenting is more than just... Um, just paying for school fees. You know, I've heard a father say that, Shebe, I paid for your school fees. I am feeding for your family. What else do you want? Mm. Else is not, what else? We want more than else. We want a navigator. You are a navigator. You are a direction. You are a path. You are a life giver. You are a source code. You are a, you are a download center. You are a manufacturing center. You are, you are everything. You are a publishing arm. You must publish the destinies of your children. They must be able to see it, okay, until they begin to harness uh, the plans of God for their life. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, mommies and daddies, brothers, the lifestyle that you live today is a function of what you have learned as you are growing up. What you have learned as you are growing up is a function of people you turn payment, people you look up to, people you look up that you consider as your role models, you consider as your payment. Whatever they taught you is what you be, you you. You, be, uh, you, you believe and you become. Uh, I, say, so I do say that a, the life of a child is a clean board. Whatever you write on it is what the child becomes. So a parent, you must be intentional. You must be deliberate. As God was deliberate, God is deliberate. God is our father. He is deliberate about what will become of our destiny. God did not just create everybody to be the same. He is deliberate. So the, the destinies of five, the destinies of three, the destinies of two of your children are not the same. You must be able to pick. Uh, you don't train the same the the, the, your children the same way. You don't say, I, I trained all of them. No. Every child has his peculiar DNA. He has his peculiar source code. He has his peculiar, he has his peculiar temperament. Our society today is witnessing teenagers that are doing ritual killing. It's becoming, it's because the home is polluted. The home is damaged. Our today is witnessing a high chunk of societal error. It's because the home is, there are some when we're growing up, you dare not bring a pen. You dare not bring a pen that is not yours to the house. You will, you will smell your name, you know. You dare, when we were growing up, every mother on the street was our mother. You dare not, you dare not do some things. But you know, technology now has not taken over. You know, civilization has not taken over. You dare not beat a child at school again. A lot of things are going. Payment will be the one to go to the school to go and fight. It's not meant to be so. It's not meant to be so. The work of a father is to discipline. To chastise. The Bible says, he who the father loves, he chastises. The works of the mother is to bring closer, to console. So as the father is chastising, the mother should be bringing closer. And the mother should not now poison the mind of the child against the father. Because both of them, they are not in competition, they are in collaboration to bring about a healthy child. You don't compete in parenting, you collaborate. You don't compete, you synergize. You don't compete, you act as a team. Because together, each and everybody achieves more. What have I been saying since? Once we get the parenting right, once parents get it right, the nation will get it right. Once we get uh, a parenting system that offers and believes so much in God, our, pay, our system will become better. My name, once again, is Dr. Adebayo. I am called the Clarity Coach. You can follow me up on uh, our Instagram, Facebook, Andrew, things underscore affairs. Things under Oscar Affairs. That's the corporate, the ministry and do. My personal handles are Playwright Baba. Playwright Baba. You can search me up there. Once again, thank you for joining me on Divine TV. God bless.